Secretary of State Frank LaRose, thank you so much for joining us. Sorry about the te technical difficulties, everybody, but that happens sometimes. Uh, all right, let's talk about it. The polls are open here in Ohio. What do Ohio voters need to know? I know there were some challenges getting some uh, people to work the polls, but it seems like you guys have overcome those challenges and now we're ready to go. Actually, couldn't be happier about the preparations that our boards of elections put in. You're right, it's election day. The polls opened uh, just over 30 minutes ago. Think about this, Christine, uh, nearly 4,000 polling locations staffed by tens of thousands of our fellow Ohioans who volunteered for this work today. And um, they all opened on time. And, and, and so far from all reports, everything's going smoothly. Really no good reason not to get out and vote. You're right though, poll worker recruitment is always a challenge. It again, takes tens of thousands of people to staff the polling locations. So when you do go vote, please thank them for the patriotic work that they're doing today. It is a long day they put in, but it's also a rewarding experience. So we're already starting poll worker recruitment for that second primary that'll most likely happen in August. And I was also really happy to see that early voting numbers came in strong. Now it kind of crescendoed there. It started off slow in the first week, second week it picked up. It really was uh, what was going smoothly in, in the final week. In fact, we have surpassed now the 2014 and 2018 uh, record for for uh, for poll or for uh, uh, for early voting turnout, uh, over 263,000 Ohioans have cast their ballot already. That's a really strong number, and uh, we hope that that continues through today. That's, yeah, we saw those numbers last night. Let's talk about them a little bit more. Are we seeing these increases in like the three big C's, the the uh, more uh, rural areas, or across the board in general? What can you tell us about where we're seeing that increase in early voting? Because it's becoming more and more popular every single year. Yeah, really broadly distributed throughout the state. As I like to say, everything from the lake to the river. Uh, Ohioans uh, <laughs> learned in many cases in 2020, how to vote absentee for the first time. Many Ohioans tried that. They learned how secure the process is, how simple it is. And some of the other added benefits, for example, when you get to vote from home, as you've heard me describe before, you're allowed to cheat on the test. You can um, maybe crack open your laptop and sit there and research the candidates. Just take 20 or 30 minutes and cast a truly informed ballot. Ohioans have also learned that you can track your ballot once you mail it in. Uh, in fact, Lauren and I did this. Uh, she decided to vote absentee this election, and then I dropped her ballot in the mailbox for her, and then we went to voteohio.gov slash track, and we made sure that it was received by the Franklin County Board of Elections. And so, yeah, 263,542 of our fellow Ohioans have already taken advantage. Now, where I am seeing a trend is that the Republican participation is way ahead of the Democratic participation in this primary. And, and again, uh, so far, uh, a lot of people can make different uh, uh, predictions about what that means. To me, it tells me that there's enthusiasm on the Republican side and, and that they're excited to get out and vote. But again, strong numbers on the Democratic side as well. Let's talk about after the polls close tonight at 730. This is different than your general election. The results that we see when we have that um, data dump from, I call it a data dump, uh, from uh, these early and absentee mail-in ballots, different things like that, um, it's going to be a better, uh, I guess, uh, result than what we would see during the general election because uh, we have different trends of who votes early and different things like that. But today, um, everybody gets a different ballot. There's different ones that you can choose from. So the results seem to be a little bit more clear um, when the polls do close at 730. Each Ohioan makes a choice when they cast a primary ballot, whether that's by mail or, or whether that's uh, early voting or in person today. Uh, you're asked, do you want a Republican ballot? Or do you want a Democratic ballot? And what you're doing when you choose one of the two party ballots is that you're declaring your party affiliation, and that will last for the next two years. Uh, it, again, it, when another primary happens, you could make a different choice if, if that's uh, how you feel. But uh, today, uh, when you vote a Republican ballot or a Democratic ballot, you will be establishing that party identity. And yeah, that, that, uh, that tells us something. Christine, it's also interesting to note uh, that um, the very first ballots that get counted or the, are the, those early votes and those absentee votes. There has always been this rumor, I don't know who started this, but it's been around that you'll hear people say they only count the absentee votes if it's close. That's the furthest thing from the truth. In fact, that's never been true. The very first ballots that are counted 
are the early votes and the absentee votes because intuitively they're already there at the board of elections ready to go uh the the, the precinct polling locations out at the high school gymnasium and the church basement and whatever else those are going to take a half an hour 45 minutes maybe even an hour to get downtown to the board of elections it's going to be a bipartisan team with a the Republican and a Democrat driving them down there. But right at 7.30 when the polls close, we can start tabulating those early votes and absentee votes. So when we re start releasing results at 7.45, 8 o'clock, and you see them right there on the bottom of your screen on NBC4 or whatever else you're watching, uh, then you're going to know that those are really those first votes counted, the early and absentee votes. All right. And like I said, we'll have a more clear um, vision of who um, might be on our November uh, ballots come general election time. All right, let's talk one more time. I know Matthew and, and everybody who were down at the boards of elections we're talking about this morning. What do you need when you go to vote today to make sure um, that it's a smooth process for everybody out there? Well, first, make sure you bring a smile. Again, uh, your fellow Ohioans are, are, are working hard to, to staff those polling locations, so thank them for the work that they do. But you need to bring a state ID or driver's license. That's the easiest thing. That's what 98% of Ohioans do. They will check your identity when you get to the polling location. And again, the, the state ID or driver's license is the simplest thing. If for some reason you don't have one or have lost it, there's a whole list of alternative documents at voteohio.gov that you can use. But again, they'll still check your signature, check those alternative documents to make sure you are who you say you are. You'll be in and out in just a few minutes and you'll leave with a handy I voted sticker so that you can show off to your fellow Ohioans that you uh, did your patriotic duty today and cast your ballot. Yep. Got to get that selfie in and make sure when you post it, you tag NBC4i and we'll uh, maybe share it out there for everybody. All right, Secretary LaRose, anything else that people need to know before they head to the polls today? No, I think that's it. And thank you so much, Christine. Yeah, no problem. Sorry, everybody, for the technical difficulties. Make sure you stay with NBC4i.com today as we continue to uh, follow this primary election day. It is going to be a big, exciting one. Thank you again, Secretary LaRose.